British boxing to an absolute standstill. Pandemonium ensued. Other routes were chosen, knowing that one day, or hoping, that these two could meet again. Well, that day has now arrived. Now we have that fight. On Sunday the 31st, so that's Bank Holiday Sunday, Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark will headline at the O2 Arena for the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles live on Sky Sports. The champion, the pride of Ipswich, with a less than traditional route to the top, showing that a stellar amateur career need not be a necessity. The challenger, who made Burton on Trent, swaddling coat proud, an Olympic bronze medalist, the Olympic team captain, ready to get moving in the pros. It's all set up perfectly. We've had Joyce and Dubois, Joshua White, Fury and Chisora, Lewis v Mason, just some of the great contests we've had for the Lonsdale belt. And this one has all the ingredients and the potential to match them. Let's go straight to the fighters. I will bring in Ben Shalom, but let's bring our fighters straight to the microphones. So let's go to the champion with his attire. Is that merchandise now available to purchase? <laughs> it will be after the presser, yeah. Avo available to purchase for everyone to buy and wear on fight night as well. Did you think this fight was going to happen? I had my reservations, definitely. Um, I wasn't always certain. Um, obviously, with what you previously mentioned and how things went before. Um, but it's done, over. The purse bid gate was, was an eventful time, but that's all over with. And finally, everything's over the line. We're here, and a big fight on the cards and a massive night to headline the O2. Set it up for us. Just why are you so confident that you retain those two belts? It's self-confidence and self-belief all the way through. I've always backed myself um, on how I carry myself into fights and training, preparation, just grit, determination, as you've seen in fights where I have to. I know I've got the skill sets to beat anyone that comes at me. And, and for me, Fraser Clark is just another one of the guys on those lists that has some attributes that are, that are good, that I will give him credit for, definitely. But I have a lot more that are a lot better than his. You did label him there, though, as, as, as just another one. Um, <laughs> what are your feelings towards him personally? I don't have any negative feelings towards him personally. Look, we both want to smash each other's heads in. That's going to happen on the 31st of March. I, I think he's a, a good guy. I think he's a pretty decent boxer, but it's too soon for him. He's not ready for me. The pro games, I know people make them very obvious comparisons between amateur and pro, and that's going to be the obvious the obvious narrative all the way through this, but I just think I'm too much for him. Fraser, the challenger, welcome. Pretty exhausting negotiations, I would have thought, that date back into, well into last year. Now you finally got this man in your, in your sights, you're sat at the table with him. How confident are you that those belts are going to be shifting over to this side of the table? Yeah, super confident, Andy. This fight is one that, you know, I wanted back then. Um, Everyone that knows me knows that. I think the fight was, even though the purse bids were cancelled, the fight was still offered to Fabio, um, and it seemed to go up in the air. But now we're finally here. Like he said, you know, I think the new age of boxing, there's a lot of talking, a lot of shenanigans go on in the circus, but I'd like to think myself and, and Fabio are two people that, you know, we want to do our talking in the ring. Is it too soon for you, like he says? Absolutely not. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking earlier about... Pro professional fights, he's had more than me, but, you know, anyone that knows boxing, and a lot of you will like to say, a lot of people like to say, you know, amateur boxing and pro boxing is different. Granted, it certainly is, but the last six, seven years of the, of the uh, amateur game that I was involved in, with the WSB as well, it was brutal. Probably more brutal than, than professional boxing at times. Um, so, you know, I believe I've bridged that gap. That's why I'm here after eight fights. He's a good fighter, but he's a good talker as well. And he's got the T-shirt on today. Uh, your reaction to... Oh, what's that? I've not even seen it yet. Stand up. That's it. Who's your told? <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh, yeah. Avanta, you know, um, the, one, the one thing that Fabio possibly can beat me at is um, the internet uh, beef, you know. Like I say, he's one of this new era of uh, heavyweight... Walks around with a fancy camera crew and, uh, 
you know, make his little reels for him. He's great at that. You know, the online stuff, he's fantastic at it. And it's, um, it's even entertained a, sm a, full, sm uh, a few small minds here today. But um, listen, it's all about what happens on the 31st. You know, all, all these shenanigans. When you've been around as long as me, whether that's in a boxing ring or sitting on the side of the ring, you see it all and uh, you become accustomed to it. I think it was mentioned in the, the gloves are off, which was one of the best I think we've recorded and can't wait to start getting some of that promo out there. But uh, one of the narratives was very much the amateur background that you have. Um, you're very uh, popular on the amateur circuit, go around and talk to a, a lot of clubs and stuff like that. Uh, do you bear the responsibility of amateur boxers that you can't lose to someone that didn't have an amateur career that came up through the white collar route? You're smiling because I, I know that this was a, a key part of the discussion. Do you feel that pressure that you're representing amateur boxing as well? No, I don't feel it as a pressure. I feel it as a privilege, if I'm honest. Um, I do believe I win this fight, and, and when I do, I think that'll be the reason um, parents send their kids to an amateur boxing club instead of like you know 16, 70 year olds with with no bottle and don't want real competition. They just want to go and uh, you know have a punch up in um, in a random social club, sell a few tickets, and become the talk of their town. You know, my amateur boxing took me around the world and and put my name in uh, in good places. Um, you know that white collar boxing, it does its bit for charity and whatnot, but ultimately. It's just the oldest kids from the town having a scrap um, for a bunch of Asked him? No way. Um, every interview I've done, you know, I've, um, I've taught Fabio Wardley up, and rightly so, I'm the underdog here. You know, I think he's done fantastic. Um, considering where he started to where he is now, you know, you have to say it's probably one of the best journeys to a British title that, that we've seen so far. So um, applause to him and his team and what he does. Um, I just back myself, Andy, the same way I have since the day I started boxing, I always back myself. Do you believe that he thinks that this is a done deal? Um, I, don't th I, don't think he's, I don't think he's arrogant enough um, to think that it's a done deal, no. Um, I'll, give him, I'll give him the credit to think that he knows there's a challenge in front of him and he's got self-belief, um, he's got confidence in himself. Like I say, his, his amateur pedigree and, and those WSB days will give him that that confidence to think that, like he said there, he thinks he's, he's bridged the gap in the pro game. So I don't think he'll take me lightly at all because I think he understands as much as he say there is, it's not a pressure, it's a privilege. Two things can be true. It can also be a privilege, but I think it is a lot of pressure on his shoulders because on paper, like he says there, I'm just, I'm just the white collar fire. I'm just the hardest bloke in the town who knocked out a few pub fires and somehow... I've, won, I've, I've winged my way to winning a British title, a Commonwealth title, and I'm at the top of the stage somehow. So all the pressure is on him. He's the Olympic bronze medalist. He's the ABA guy. He's the one with the pedigree that should beat me. So when it comes that he doesn't, where does that leave him? In terms of the fight itself, it didn't happen originally, and he's had uh, Marius Vac and Dave Allen in that interim. Do you believe that that's going to make a difference, that that is decent enough preparation and experience? Has that uh, made any difference in your thoughts at all? No. It's not, it's not, it's not good preparation in the slightest. The best thing you can, you can take from it is that he got 10 rounds out of it. Him and Marius whacked through three punches around each, so I could do 80 rounds of those. That's not really a problem. I think you need to be in there with, with good, ambitious level competitors, people who, who want to try and win, who are there to try and take your head off. Um, and I don't believe that Marius Wack nor Dave Allen had any, any ounce of ambition in them and any ounce of really fight or athleticism about them to really want to try and be game and grit and win the fight. They were just there, I think even by his own admission, he knows they just turned up for paydays. Is he the best fighter that you fought as a pro? Or will he represent that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, again, I'll give him that at least. He's, he will be my hardest test to date. Technically, he's a very sound boxer, very switched on. I think in, in situations where maybe previous opponents have potentially been flustered. I think he'll be conf confident and composed enough to manage situations, but ultimately, I still believe I, I get the win. Do you believe that there's anybody on his record that you wouldn't have beat? Um, absolutely not. You know, I think, I think his actual, his, his best wins aren't even the names that have been mentioned. I mean, I, I go back on his record and I look at um, 
tough, tough people like the fellow with the, um, the yellow beard, Latte, Richard La- 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 Latte. Latte, no party. I, I, think that, I think that's a good win. You know, I, I see the names on there, you know, your Molina. Take from it what you will, you know, we're talking, we're talking in the Marius Wack and Dave Allen um, sector of, of fighters, really. Um, so I do rate what he's done, but um, I would absolutely do what he's done, and he could never do what I've done, and, and that's, that's the fact of it. Um, so many people have tried... So many people um, never got, they've gone and done what he's done, been unbeaten, become British and Commonwealth champion. I'll just have that, that extra thing, you know, beforehand, um, the Olympic medal and all the accolades. Do you know uh, where you would rank in terms of fastest to a British title? No, I don't really care. You, so you would be the fastest. Does that shock you? Or does that back up his point that it's too soon for you or you're confident that the eight fights that you've had is, is, is enough? It backed up his point, absolutely. You know, it, it is quick. Um, but coming into the pro game, um, I knew it would be quick. You know, like Fabio stated to me um, the other day, and Gubbs are off, I'm an old man. So um, you can put pressure, like, pressure, you can say pressure's on me because the amateur background, you don't want to get beaten by an old man. So, you know, I think there's pressure that applies to both of us. Let's bring in promoter Ben Shalom. A few more grey hairs than when you started in terms of getting this fight done. It's been a long, long time coming. Uh, now it's over the line. Are you pretty happy that you get to finish this chapter of the book? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's been nearly a year since that initial purse bid. It was a fight that we always wanted. It was a fight that we did always want to make. I think the fact that Fraser Clark's going to be possibly the fastest ever British heavyweight champion says a lot about how quickly he has moved. The same people saying that he ducked him are the same people saying it's too soon now. Um, but you can't win in boxing. I think the, the fact is it's a new generation of heavyweights. That's what I'm most excited about. You look at the Dillian Whites and the Anthony Joshuas and the Tyson Furies and where they're at right now at the pinnacle, at the end of their careers. You want the new blood. You need the new names. So to get it at the O2, to get it on the 31st of March, to get it headlining the O2 as well on Sky Sports, that's where it should be. And that's where both of them earn the most money, is where both of them are going to benefit off for the rest of their career. I'm delighted to have delivered the opportunity for Fraser Clark, but equally Fabio Wardley gets his time to shine as well. So it's just a huge fight, a huge domestic heavyweight fight, and that's the most important thing. I'll invite you to address each other. Um, Will you tell Fraser how this fight ends? <laughs> it ends like all my other fights have ended, with my hand raised and him flat on the back. I said, I said this to him when we did the gloves are off. I've said it to him whenever I've been asked the question as well. That, look, he'll be game, he'll turn up, he'll want to he'll wanna scrap and he'll want to fight for it, but I think he'll just find out on the night that he doesn't have enough fight to get through me. Roughly translated, I'll take... I'll take loads of jabs, loads of right hands, you know, eventually um, we'll, we'll bang on Fraser getting tired. After I've took a few more jabs, I'll then do this thing that Fabio Wardley does and just unleash hell on everyone. Come in, swinging, losing his shape, um, trying, trying to take people out, which he's done so far. Um, but like well. I say, you know, um, I'm here to break the mould. I, I, I do applaud what he's done so far. I just want him to know and his team to know that, you know, he's in with a different kettle of fish. What was it that you said there? It's worked so far. I said it's worked well so far. All, all of those tactics have worked well so far and don't get me wrong, he's got a few different skill sets, but they'll work all the same on him as well. That's what you hope. That's what you hope. Um, we'll see, won't we, you know? Like I said, you know, we're here to try and, you know, sell the fight, but unfortunately... I'm not like the other, the other clans in, in boxing in our days. You know, I'm not going to throw a glass at him or chuck a table at him. I'll just say how it is. I feel I'm the better fighter. He's the champion. I give him respect for that. Like I said before, I've got a lot of respect for his coach. I just hope one thing, you buy my pint after my British title win like I brought your first pint after your British title win. Cheers. Do you believe that you win this fight by knockout, Fraser? Absolutely. I'm training so well. Feel so good, um, confident or already at these early stages. Um, we plan to win by knockout, you know, the same way he does. Um, this is why I think this is such a good fight. You've got two people colliding with this, with the very same mindset. You know, um, Fabio never wants to see the final battle. He wants to get work done early. And uh, again, in the gloves are off. We both stayed. You know, we don't get paid for overtime. 
Um, two heavyweights want to fight, want to entertain, and I'm sure we will. Who is the bigger puncher of the two of you? Me. Yeah, I think that you. much is obvious. I think you can see from my record on the bigger puncher. There's, there's people on his record he hasn't even stopped. So... Who didn't I start? Who did I go to points with again? Sokolovsky. I think that's the one I went to points with. Camille, yep. Camille. Tough guy, you know, hard head, full of drugs. Um, so, no, pro probably not. But other than that, I think I've done an all right job. Obviously, he flattened... Who did he flatten? He flattened Gorman. Everyone. Just say everyone. Ball one. Yeah, no, yeah, you know what? Just he, say everyone, man. He's, he's a puncher, then. he's a puncher. Um, but he likes to state the fact that, you know, he, he's, he's already beat class amateurs. Have who? Simon Vallely. He was good. Class amateur. He Nathan good. Gorman. Class amateur. Stop saying Nathan Gorman was a class amateur. Stop saying that. He, he wanted probably won a junior ABA title. Probably got a bye to the final. Might have even got a bye in the final, and they give him the trophy. Come on, GB, for a little bit. That sounded it, very did, similar did, to your Olympic run. Did, did, didn't want to do the hard work. Uh, my Olympic, uh, my Olympic bronze. No, that was fought for, mate. That was qualified. He starts in the qualification. So I won my three bites well, there. You got a buy in there somewhere, didn't you? A buy, a Eight win, and a disqualification. Uh, yeah, but we got there in the end. Just like your journey from the white collars to here, you got there eventually. That's, a, that's an interesting. That's an interesting run. Who, one one win and you got a bronze medal out of it. Two wins. Okay, you count the DQ if you want. Two wins. Count the DQ if you want. Wins a win, mate. <laughs> yeah, a wins a win. A wins a and you'll win. You'll find that hurt. You, 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 by, by any means. <laughs> a wins a win. You by take a DQ means. as a win. That's mad. But all right, cool. Come on. Who do you think has got the better or higher ring IQ? Oh, behave yourself, Andy. <laughs> IQ? He, he, he's a, he, as a swing up, as a punch up. He does what, he does what people do outside the pub on a Friday night. He does, no, he's, been, he's gone to Ben Davidson now, so he's, you know, he's, he's got someone who's good in his corner, actually, who, you know, who's actually teaching him to box a little bit, and he's probably getting a better understanding. I, you know, I like the little cute thing you did against Adelaide, the shove off and the hook, you know, big applause for that. I've been doing it for 10 years, but no, well done. You disagree with that? No, nah, to be fair, he probably has got the higher IQ in terms of time in the ring and learning from obviously massively experienced coaches and the scene that he was on and being around them, probably, yeah. But it's not just about that, is it? It's no, it's, it's a fight. About, it's it's not fight. just about the it's IQ, a fight. it's a fight at the end it's of the day. It's a fight. You're absolutely right. It's about right. who's got the dog, who's got the heart, who can swing it out, who can, who can really grit through in certain moments where who wants to quit out, who wants to take a knee, who, do, who really gets sticky and it gets late in the fight, doesn't want to be there anymore. They're all factors as well. Ring IQ is one of them. Yeah, cool. How strong are you? How fast are you? How much do you want it? They're all factors as well. And in all of those areas, I've ticked those boxes many times over. You can pick a fight, you can when, see it. When? When did you have ticked them boxes? Apart from take... You took daft shots off a guy that came in, busted your nose, I'm talking about Gorman, and did you have to answer questions then from taking a few daft jabs? Yeah. What did you have to answer? You took a few soft jabs. I got my nose split up, blood everywhere, and I still finished the fight. Oh, you had a little bit of blood, did you? It's still, it's still questions you've not answered. I've, I've, I've boxed with you got, 20 you got, your, you got your eyes split and you're counting that as a win. When? In the, in the Olympics, you've got a DQ and you're counting that as a win. What now, are you talking about? Come on, Fabio, let's get your facts right. That's not what happened. I got the cuts. I got two cuts in their different fight. I got the DQ against the French kid. I went on and boxed with them cuts. I didn't have to find the dog because I took some daft shots. Yeah, so you carried on the fight with the cut, same as me, and won. Cool. Yeah, so the questions have been answered by both of us then? In the amateurs. In the amateurs, in the amateurs. In the amateurs. That's, per in, that's in perfect, the, that's in perfect the round, spill in the from a guy that's not done the amateurs, who chose not to do the amateurs. And a lot of people are doing this in our days. I seen a 16-year-old the other day. Last time I seen him was boxing the amateurs um, near, near, in national semi-final. I looked the other day, he's doing this, what, he's champion of nothing. Champion of nothing, one of these little belts that you could have brought from Primark. Chose the easy way out. Belts and that, belts and that are irrelevant. If you, if you love and care for... No, them, them belts aren't if irrelevant. You love, if you love and care for the sport of boxing and you find any which way to do it, white collar or not, cool. 
I'm happy to support that. I'm happy to be an advocate of that. I'm happy to back that. No. I don't care if you do amateur. I don't care if you do white collar. If you appreciate and you love the sport and it's something you want to do and you want to find a way in boxing, if you can look to me and say, you know what, Fabio did that, I can do that, then cool, I will take that mantle. The same way you try and carry the ABA in your back and you run round to the gyms and you want to preach normal. to the kids about going through the amateur route, all my, all my part is saying, hey, there's a different way to do it. If you dedicate yourself, you commit yourself to the sport and you love boxing, there's a different way to do that. I'm not saying, the two belts I'm not on the saying one's right or wrong. Are proof of that. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I applaud you for what you've done. You know what? Somewhere in this white collar world, um, and they're all going to hate for me, it's the promoters. You're all making a few quid and say it's for charity. Do me a favour. Um, but listen, you've done well. I applaud the way you've got up there. I can't wait to fight you. We've shared, we've shared a little bit in the ring, so we know a little bit about each other. You can't take nothing from that. But um, you've seen a bit of me, I've seen a bit of you. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of each other. So when was that? Uh, probably a year ago. About a year ago. Year Six right. rounds a year ago? Yeah. It's not that long ago. Yeah, it's, it's... yeah but since... I can't, you can't really take nothing. He's, he's improved massively since then from what I've seen. I know I have. It was, I think it was before the camel fight. Um, yeah, so that was probably my worst performance as a pro yet. So um, you can't take much from it. I'll invite you just to give a final message to each other. Champion first. <laughs> Look, I respect you as a man, as a fighter, and your accomplishments, but it changes nothing for me. Ultimately, over the next eight, nine weeks, you're my enemy. I'm planning to take your head off and go home with my belts. Exactly that. The art of war. Finally here. You know, I see Alan Babbage down here. The war, the war machine... <laughs>